Right. Hey, welcome everyone. We have a couple minutes for everybody to join us. We've got a couple, a couple of folks that are still getting added to the Zoom call. All right, as we're waiting for everybody to, to log in, just want to welcome those of you who are already on the call. Um, I'm Laura with Michaels. I wanted to introduce you to Megan. We've got Megan Faulkner Brown with us here at from Sweet Tooth Fairy. She is the, the proud owner of Sweet Tooth Fairy, and she has partnered with American Crafts to um, offer food crafting products. And so she, we have her here today with us to educate us on, on cake decorating and and you know all, all the fun things that um, we're going to have, you know, turning a, a normal cake into something into something special. So, um, with that, I wanted to let you know that we're going to go ahead and keep everybody on mute. Um, but we highly encourage you guys to ask questions um, in the chat box on the side. So while we're doing that, um, I'll I'll help facilitate some of the questions over to Megan as she's going through the class. But otherwise, we're here to have fun and we're here to learn and we hope you enjoy this and we're glad you're joining Michaels for the for the hour. So with that, you want to pass it over to Megan. Hey, hi everyone. It's so fun to be here again today. Welcome back to anyone who has joined any of our previous classes together and welcome to any new friends who are out there. We love hearing where you're from. Um, so go ahead and let us know where you're joining us from. It's always fun to see how we can come together from all over to be creative and just have a good time. Um, so thank you, Laura, for the introduction. Just a, a little bit more of a brief intro into myself. I have always loved to play in the kitchen. Uh, some of my earliest memories are from when I was just a little girl sitting up to the kitchen counter with my mom and just letting her let me be in there with her and watching her do all the things. And um, it's always been a creative outlet for me. It's just a hobby that I've loved. And I worked in the food industry from the time I was little. Um, my parents actually had a catering company. They had a cookie dough company. Um, I worked in, in um, on farms, picking berries, making jam, all sorts of fun things. And so food is my my happy place. <laughs> so um, when I was about, well, in my 20s, I opened up a bakery called the Sweet Tooth Fairy. That was a long time ago. <laughs> it was about 12 years ago. And um, since then, there have been a lot of awesome opportunities that have happened. I was able to compete and win on Food Network's Cupcake Wars. We have franchised our bakery, which means other people can have their their own bakery using our recipes and our processes and our systems and like Laura was saying I've had the opportunity to partner with American Crafts to bring you my fellow at home bakers lots of fun food crafting items from tools to sprinkles to candy to things that I have felt like over the course of my life um, that I just dreamed about that I dreamed about creating for all of you so thank you for being here again super happy to be here so today's class is um, Cake Tips and Drips 101. So hopefully some of you in here have played with cake before. Um, if not, this is a really great place to start and just learn some of the things that I have found really helpful over the course of my career. The first thing I wanna talk to you guys about is baking your cakes ahead of time. Um, and, and using them while they are frozen or chilled. One of the things that is really great about doing this is, let's say, well, all of our lives are really busy, right? We all have lots of things going on. Um, and what if, you know, sometimes you don't have several hours of one day to commit to making an entire cake. So it's helpful with time management. You can bake your cakes ahead of time, allow them to cool, you know, remove them from their pans, and then you just wrap them in some clean, clean wrap, make sure they are airtight, and you can store these in the freezer 
for months. Now, <laughs> I'm sure that some of you probably don't need to store them that long. However, if you have an at-home bakery, if you have a business, you're, you know, you're running out of your bakery, which is how I, excuse me, out of your home, which is how I started as well, this is a really helpful tip. And not only is it helpful for time management, but it's also helpful when you're actually working with the cake. Have you ever been working with a cake that's, you know, freshly made and it's still a little soft and you're kind of putting on some frosting <laughs> or your, let's say your filling hasn't set all the way, um, using chilled or frozen cakes will really help, help you with that. So I'm going to show you, just get started on, um, on assembling the cake. So this is a cardboard cake round, and I'm working today with eight inch cakes, but feel free to work with whatever size you'd like. One tip that I will show you, can you hand me the um, tape please? Yeah. One tip that you can do is just get a, some tape. Now this is packaging tape, but it does not have to be packaging tape. And I just make a little loop and I stick it on the bottom of the cardboard. And then I put it on my cake turner. So cake turners are also an important um, tool that are really, really awesome for making cakes. Um, if you don't have one, I highly suggest getting one. They are available at Michael's and they don't necessarily need to be anything fancy. If you don't have one, you can kind of make your own by using, it's going to sound crazy, but like a can of beans or some sort of larger can that is heavy and then you can get a flat plate and then you can set your cardboard cake circle on that plate and you can use that. You will just need to be mindful of turning, um, but it will help your cake be at a level that is helpful while you're frosting it. Um, and you can also just be gentle when you're spinning it. Um, so there are ways to improvise if you don't have one, but these are really great and they come in really handy. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I have put some frosting into a piping bag um, and I'm just cutting, I'm not putting a tip in here, I'm just cutting the bag. And all I'm gonna do is make a little dollop on the cardboard cake circle. And essentially I'm gonna be gluing my cake to the cardboard cake circle because as you're frosting and as you're decorating, you don't want your cake, not only do you not want your cake board sliding around, but you don't want your cake to actually slide around either. The other thing that I find really helpful is to have some disposable gloves. You can get these kind of almost anywhere, but I just like to have my hands clean while I'm working. So I'm gonna put these on and then, I'm just removing my cake from the cake, uh, the saran wrap, and it's now adhered to the cardboard cake circle. So next, what I'm gonna do is do a, um, it's kind of like a frosting wall, per se, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this frosting and I'm gonna go around the top of my cake in a complete circle. And what that's gonna do, it's gonna create like a little wall or like a barrier um, so that when I put my filling in the cake, it's not gonna be oozing out the sides and it's gonna provide some structural support to when I put the top of the cake on it. So you'll see, I'm just applying even amounts of pressure while I'm doing my circle. Depending upon what you're filling your cake with, um, can kind of determine how tall you make your frosting wall. Some people don't like a lot of frosting. It's hard for me to relate to those people, <laughs> but, um, but that's okay. If, you wanna, if you're not a frosting person, you can just do a, a nice thin layer of frosting. Okay, so you can see I have a completed circle. The next thing I'm gonna do is put my filling in. Now the fun thing about filling is it can be 
really it can be anything. It can be jam, it can be pudding, it can be frosting that you've um, folded some stuff into, which is what I'm gonna show you today. You just wanna make sure again, if you're using some texture that's different than your buttercream, that's a little more loosey, then you for sure, for sure wanna make sure that you have a really great frosting wall so that when you put that cake on top, it doesn't slide and jiggle all over the place. Okay, so I have some, just some buttercream frosting here. And one of the things that I think is fun to do is whomever you're making the cake for, you know, you can just ask them like, hey, what are some of your favorite treats? Or what's your favorite candy? Or do you like, you know, are you a fruit person? Or do you like chocolate or whatever? And then you can just take your frosting that you've made um, and fold some of those things into the frosting. So today I have some sandwich cookies that I'm just gonna break up and put in there. And then I also have just some tiny little candy coated chocolate cookie or chocolate candies um, that will fold in as well. So you can see I'm just adding them in. There's really no right or wrong way to be doing this when you're adding stuff to your buttercream. You can put a ton in, you can put a little in, it really just depends on, on what you like. So I'm just gonna fold in those chocolate candies. <clears throat> and then I'm even gonna just take some sprinkles. I'm gonna throw a little handful of the sprinkles in there because why not? Who doesn't, love, who doesn't love sprinkles, right? And then I'm gonna take some of these chocolate sandwich cookies and I'm just gonna break them. Just gonna break them into the frosting and fold them in and then we're gonna put them into the center of your cake. It makes for a really fun surprise and one of the things that I say often and I apologize if it sounds cheesy but I feel like it's true. It doesn't really take much to take something that's ordinary and make it extraordinary. Okay, so I promise you a couple questions about your buttercream recipe. Oh, okay. Do you have uh, as to what yours is made of? Okay, so it is made of, I actually, in this recipe, which I, I can definitely share, this has um, butter, it has cream cheese, powdered sugar, evaporated milk, and, um, and some vanilla and a little bit of salt. So really simple, simple ingredients that some of us probably have in our pantry or in our fridges at home. And um, it's awesome because you can make it ahead of time, you can freeze it, you can put it in, you know, like a plastic container, just make sure it's airtight. You can freeze them in pastry bags. If you have pastry bags, you can load them up freeze those. That's helpful if you, again, if you are making cakes at home um, for fun or for home-based business, it's really helpful to have some inventory of frosting. Mm -hmm. we, I always love having an inventory of frosting in my freezer. <laughs> so um, I hope that was helpful. I'm happy to share my recipe. Don't have it memori memorized off the top of my head at the moment, but I will definitely share it with you. Okay, so now all I'm doing is I just took some of this filling and I just plopped it into the center of the frosting wall and I'm just giving it, spreading it around and hopefully you can see, you can see that. Um, not, there's nothing, I don't believe that's super technical about this process. You just want to give it a good spread and make sure that it's level. Because when I put this next cake layer on top, you just, again, want to make sure it's level so that your cake isn't lopsided. And at this point, the best way to kind of do that is just to kind of crunch down, punch down, and just look and see with your eye um, if it's level or not. Okay, yum, that looks delicious. All right, so next, I have my other cake layered and taking it out of the 
the wrap. And then what I like to do, so this cake has been leveled. I don't know if you can see, I'll hold it up against the white. Mm -hmm. um, there's a couple different ways that you can do this. So um, in your cake pan, you, after your cake has cooled, you can take a knife that is longer than your cake pan. Okay, and then you can set the blade of the knife on, so it touches both sides of your cake pan, and then you can just gently kind of shimmy it this way. You're gonna to wanna to make sure the knife is serrated, which you know means that it has the little edges and kind of like the teeth, and you're just gonna give it a nice little, little shimmy <laughs> with the blade. And, um, and that will help you level your cake. The other thing you can do is when the cake comes out of the oven, um, you know, let it set up and cool for about 10, maybe 15 minutes. And then you can actually take your cake pan and flip it over onto a flat surface. Because at that point, your cake is not entirely cooled yet. It's still, um, the temperature is still coming down and it's still a little pliable. And so your cake, if it's flipped over on the part that's a little bit domed or if it's baked up a little bit, it will just kind of flatten. And, um, and so that's, that's a really helpful and easy way to get your cake flat. Um, one of the techniques, even though this cake has been leveled, is I like to flip it over and use the bottom of the cake as the top of the cake. That will just help make sure that you have a nice, nice flat top. All right. And then I just like to take a little bit of frosting and spread it on just to kind of add a little bit more glue to the cake, make sure that it sticks to the other, or excuse me, to the middle. And then you just gently set it on top. And then you kind of just can give it a good little, little press as you're spinning it and make sure that it's not wiggling around or any of that. So now we have our cake rounds, we have our filling, and um, I don't know if you can see that well from that angle. Here, let me show you. I'll lift it up, be very careful. So you can- Is this an eight inch cake round? Yes, this is an eight inch. There are some um, like gaps or spots on the cake where there's not as much frosting in the, um, in the middle. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take that piping bag that I have with my frosting and I'm gonna squeeze it. And while I'm applying a little bit of pressure, I'm gonna go ahead and fill in those, those gaps with my other hand, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna let the cake turner do all the work. I'm just gonna spin it and squeeze and fill in those gaps so that when I come back with my crumb coat, then um, that I don't have any holes inside of my, the, the middle. That makes, hope that makes sense. Okay. Are we good? Do we have any burning questions at the moment? We do have a couple of questions on freezing cake. So like if you were to freeze a cake, how long does it take to thaw and how do you maintain frosting that has been frozen? Okay, so if, um, if I'm, so I prefer and advise to work with cake rounds that, that are frozen. Um, if I were to be, after I finish my cake and I'm giving it to someone or I'm serving it, I'm going to take it out at least like an hour and a half before um, it's due or for the party or for the event or whatever, so that it can, it'll, it won't thaw 100%. It'll still be kind of chilled, um, which I guess is a pre preference. I like chilled cake. <laughs> But, um, but yeah, I would say at least an hour and a half to two hours before the event or before you would like to serve it so that it's not like ice cream. <laughs> it's not like frozen, frozen cake. So I hope that answers, that answers your question. How about any recommendations if you don't have a stand mixer? 
Are there recommendations that you have for making sure that it comes out nice and smooth? Oh, the frosting? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, you can just get like a handheld, a handheld mixer. Those work just fine. We, I, I still use those sometime when I have a lot of stuff going on to, uh, to augment my stand mixer. Um, it is really helpful to have some um, mechanical things helping you with that frosting because it'll be a really good arm workout. But if you don't have either, just a whisk and a rubber spatula, kind of like something like this can still do the trick. The other thing um, somewhat related is if you, if you don't make your own frosting and you buy store-bought, you can take it out of the container, put it into your stand mixer or um, hand mixer or what have you, and just give it a good, a good whipping um, and it will increase the volume of the, the frosting. So you kind of have a little bit more. You can also add um, more powdered sugar if you'd like it to be firmer. Um, you can add any in inclusions, any stuff to the frosting like I did with the cookies or the candy to act as a filling. So there are definitely options for you um, if you don't have the ability to make the frosting at home. So is there any up. difference in taste from a freshly baked to a frozen cake? Um, is the, I'm sorry, do you mind repeating the question? Is there any difference in taste that you notice from a freshly baked cake to a frozen cake? Um, I personally, I don't. I actually feel like letting the cake cool and then frosting it kind of helps the flavors saturate a little bit more. Um, I'm a huge texture person and, um, <clears throat> and I prefer, I just, I just prefer the, the texture of a frozen or chilled cake, even if it has thought, it just seems like it, it's a lot, um, no, it's a lot, has, has more moisture, it's kind of softer, like it's, it's really good. <laughs> so, so there you, there you go. Okay. The next thing I am going to show you how to do is the crumb coat. And um, for those of you who aren't familiar with what a crumb coat is, it is, it's a, it's a scrappy, crummy layer of frosting that goes around your, um, initially that goes around your cake. It does not have to be pretty. Um, the whole point of it is to essentially trap the crumbs um, into the frosting on this first layer so that when you come and do your second layer or potentially third depending upon you know what technique you're going for you have nice clean frosting and um, the other thing to note about this crumb coat is for those of you who are going for like that naked or semi-naked cake look that's essentially what what you're doing is you're putting a crumb coat on the cake and leaving it at that stage. What I like to do, um, and again, I'm happy to share my frosting recipe with you, but when I'm doing a crumb coat, I actually will take some milk or whatever, whatever liquid you're using in your recipes, whether it's cream, milk, a juice, what have you, and I will thin my frosting out just a little bit. Now the reason I do that, in particular if I'm doing like a naked cake, is so that it's a little bit more sheer. Um, the frosting is thinner and it still will trap in those crumbs, but again, in particular with that naked look, which is super popular, it just means that you can actually see more of the cake exposed, which is, um, which is important to a lot of people who are going for that naked cake look. So again, there's, there's not, there's necessarily isn't a like formula for thinning it out. I think that you know the texture of your frostings and, um, and just by adding, you know, by a tablespoon or two at a time, you can thin it out and it will really, really help with, with that. So 
This has been sitting for a couple hours this morning with some um, cling wrap on top. So I'm just mixing it around. And then I'm taking an icing spatula. And this is again where your turntable comes in really, really handy because you're gonna see, I'm gonna be using my um, non-prominent hand and to spin it. And then I'm gonna use my right hand to be doing some of the frosting. But this really helps, this tool really helps so that you're not, you know, kind of maneuvering all over the cake. You can just be steady and spin with your other hand. So again, this frosting has been a little thinned out and you're gonna see as I do this, in particular with chocolate cake, you're gonna see there's gonna be quite a bit of crumbs. Um, maybe you won't be able to see or forget because it's the, you're not super zoomed in on the actual cake, but I will fold it up to you and show you here in just a moment. <clears throat> and if there are any questions while I'm doing this, I'm happy to answer them. Do you find that regular milk or half and half milk could be used for the buttercream instead of cream? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yep. Um, I personally, this is just me. I personally uh, don't really notice that much of a difference with the buttercream if I'm using milk, cream, um, half and half, what have you. I feel like the butter is so much of the flavor and um, in that, again, it's, I, don't, I don't know that either one of those things necessarily adds to the flavor profile that much. So I definitely think you could use any of them for sure. Let's see, okay. So at this point I have, I haven't done the top yet, but you can see it's kind of messy. Now I'm gonna take um, a cake scraper or a cake comb um, and I'm gonna flatten the edges. So this is a flat sided cake comb. If you don't have one of these, um, you can use, um, I actually use a, a drywall tool <laughs> for so long, which is actually why I designed these because um, when you're doing tall cakes, there aren't a lot of cakes at the time. There weren't a lot of cake scrapers that were tall enough to get your cake smooth with one fell swoop. And so that's why this one's super tall, but you can use um, like cardboard, you can, anything that's flat, you could use to help you smooth this out. So I'm going to, you're going to see, I'm going to be holding this hand pretty steady. And again, I'm going to be having my table, my turntable do a lot of the work. So I'm just holding my hand steady, allowing the turntable to do its thing. You can see it kind of will scrape off some of the frosting. Then what I like to do is in my bowl, I kind of designate a portion of my bowl that has crumbs in it. And then I use that to go on to the top of my cake. So just for good measure, I'll go around one more time. Now, if you're going for that naked look, then you can see here that you can get it really, really thin and you can expose quite a bit of the cake, which I think is so beautiful. I remember when the trend first started and I was chatting with my mom who's on, hi mom, and <laughs> she just was baffled. Like, who doesn't want frosting all the way on their cake, you know? And, um, and as a frosting fan, I understand her sentiment, but at the same time, as, as an artist, right? I just think it's so pretty, so, so pretty. So, okay, so you can see this. And then again, I just take that, that kind of crummy frosting that I have on the side of my bowl and I put it on the top of my cake and use my cake turner 
giving it a good spin. And then I'm gonna take that cake, uh, that comb, that scraper, and I'm going to just kind of flatten the top. Again, I can just hold, hold it still and have to do some, some surgery here. So some of the cake pulled off, which is totally normal and happens. And then I'm just coming back with, with my spatula, taking care of that. Okay. Okay, so can we see how we have this crummy, I'm gonna hold it up. You can see how there's crumbs kind of trapped in. Okay, so at this point, um, at this point what I would do is put your cake into either the fridge or freezer for about 15, at least 15, 20 minutes. Um, if let's say you're doing this cake ahead of time and you're like, okay, I don't have time to do this today, but I'm gonna do it this weekend or I'm gonna do it tomorrow or whatever, just make sure at this stage that you make it airtight. So you either put it in um, you know, a giant plastic bag that seals or you, you, know, you um, cover it with some of the cling wrap and, um, and you can put this in the freezer for, not forever, <laughs> but for a long time. I mean, you can put it in there for as long as it's airtight, I would say at least a couple weeks to a month or so, or even longer. I don't anticipate you guys, you know, having to do that, but, um, but you could because again, you're trapping in all the, the moisture of the cake with the frosting and then when you're making it sealed and airtight with the plastic wrap or what have you, then you're keeping that um, locked in as well. So the cake will, it won't dry out in the freezer. Um, and so that's a really good thing to be able to do. Again, our lives are busy and maybe you don't have time to do all of the everything in one day and that's okay. So, um, so I'm gonna show you a couple just different techniques for the frosting on the side before I do some TV magic and have my daughter bring in a cake that has been, um, that has already been setting up in the freezer and has some smooth frosting on it. Um, I'm gonna set this dirty one here. Will you go clean that for me, please? Thank you. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna show you, again, this is just an icing spatula and, um, I'm just gonna take some buttercream and I'm just gonna show you a couple different looks that I think are super beautiful um, and really, really easy to do. So take your buttercream and just kind of apply it to the outside. And again, ideally you're doing this on a cake that, has, that you've already had chilled in the freezer or fridge for a while. Um, but in the interest of time, I'm just gonna go ahead and do it on this cake. Hang so on. when you yeah. freeze a cake, does that prevent the breaking? On, break? like, on those edges and stuff? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, again, it helps everything just kind of shrink and like kind of stay more condensed mm -hmm. so that when you're doing this process, it's not pulling the cake off because it's more, it's frozen, right? So it doesn't, it's not as loose. That makes sense, I hope. That makes sense. Okay. Okay, so let's see. I'm gonna kind of do this a little fast so we can move on to the fun, drippy part. But I'm just doing like a nice, even, even-ish coat of frosting over my crumb coat. You can dye your frosting different colors, which um, I'll show you here in the next step. Just some fun things to do with some different colored frostings. Um, but I just wanna show you some different looks that you can get with um, an icing spatula or a spoon or a knife, just whatever you have around, we can get a little creative and make it work. So, all right. 
So here we have, oops, we'll get the top. I'll tell you what I am. Okay, I have eager helpers who are wanting to get the cake. <laughs> the other one. Okay, <clears throat> so you can see this is a pretty kind of messy looking cake. And um, I like to refer to a frosting technique as just that, as messy. So you can just take a spatula and kind of just pull it, push it, let do little swirls. You can go any direction. And can you kind of see how it just gives a lot of texture? But it kind of looks messy, but it's like this intentional messy look. Maybe so if yeah. someone was using icing from a from a container, from a pre-bought container, do you have any tips as to like what would you do differently? Um no, not necessarily. I mean, I would just, I would just make sure that the frosting, that the, the texture of the frosting that you purchase, excuse me, um, that it's thick enough to kind of withhold whatever, <clears throat> um, like activity you're doing. Meaning, like, I know some of the, some store bought frostings can tend to be like a little bit looser, which is. Um, which again, you could add powdered sugar to kind of stiffen it up. Um, or if you get one that's pretty stiff, you can add, you can look on the ingredients label and see if they use water or whatnot and add a little bit more of whatever liquid they have in there to kind of make it um, looser and more malleable. Um, but again, I think, I think just playing around with it and you know, maybe you find a certain store bought that you love just, you know, maybe buy a couple extra pans and just play around with it with the next cake that you have and take note of how it, how it reacts to what you're trying to do with it. Whether that's thin it out to do like a naked cake or whether that's using it as is and just seeing how it, um, how it, again, how it kind of reacts to the different tools that you're using or whether that's adding different ingredients to it or adding powdered sugar to kind of help change the texture. So I hope that's, hope that's helpful. Um, it's funny because it's actually my birthday month and uh, my favorite cake still to this day is a store-bought like confetti cake with store-bought frosting. Even though I am a huge proponent of making your own frosting and having some always ready, it's just something so nostalgic about store-bought cake and store-bought frosting. So, don't feel, don't feel ashamed if you are a store-bought frosting lover because I think there is a lot of beauty and convenience and wisdom in being able to pop in someplace, get some frosting, and be done with it. So, um, okay. So, I'm going to go back. So, there's kind of that messy look, right? So, next one I'm going to show you is just like a, I'm just going to go up and down with my spatula like this. So it's gonna kind of give more of like vertical lines. And let's see, I'm gonna do it. I'm doing it watching myself in the camera. So see, I'm just going up and down, up and down. Still kind of has like a little bit of a like messy-ish look but just different than the one that we just previously did where we were going like a bunch of different directions okay that this is kind of up and down so the next one again this um this spinner is comes in handy when you're doing this this is just what i kind of refer to as like horizontal ruffles where you just hold your spatula, use your cake turner, and spin your cake around. And as I'm doing so, I'm like ever so gently moving my right hand with the spatula up so that it creates these different levels of 
um, of those like ruffles, if that makes sense. Then you can just take your spatula, kind of pull that top layer of ruffle in so you have somewhat of a crisper edge. And there are different tools that you can use that can give cool techniques on the side. There's, um, there's different cake combs. And, um, but again, you can just use, you can just use a spatula. You could even use a spoon. I mean, anything that kind of has that rounded shape to it, you could really use to achieve any one of these looks. So, um, okay. So now, are we good here? We have any questions at this point? We're gonna move on to the cake drip, the meltables, which are so super fun. Um, we'll get some parchment paper. Okay. Okay, so, three please. I'm gonna give this cake to my lovely assistant. And then we're gonna bring in the cake that has been chilling in the freezer. Oops. Okay. And I'm just getting my, using the spatula, getting underneath it. Remember we taped it down, so it's a little sticky. Thank you. Will you grab me, hand me this cake and then we're gonna put another little um, cake uh, tape down. One thing I wanted to just briefly mention as well is in the beginning uh, when we were doing our cake, we put it on a cardboard cake circle, right? On one that was the same size as the cake that was baked. So we're using an eight inch cake. I use an eight inch cake um, cardboard cake circle. If you, um, you know, if you are, let's say you're making a wedding cake, um, I would for sure recommend, you know, knowing what cake uh, stand or display you're gonna be using at that point. So you know, obviously what size cardboard cake circle to put your cake on, but then to make sure that you use that and that you don't put it directly on a, on a cake board that's bigger than the cake itself because, um, because sometimes if you, again, specifically like with weddings or um, people who are particular about pictures that they want of their cakes, um, sometimes people don't want just like exposed white cardboard under their cake. So you can see here what I did is I picked up some a cute scalloped cardboard cake round that is bigger than the cake itself. So that means that um, I'm gonna be using part of the cardboard, this cake round, as part of the display. If I were using something else, again, like a beautiful glass cake stand or whatever, I would just wanna keep, like put the cake directly onto that. Personal preference um, comes from years of <laughs> um, direction from customers and whatnot, but I do think that that is just, a fun uh, or something to take into kin to consideration. Oops, and I have plastic gloves on, so of course this is sticking to my gloves. Get a new one. Okay, so here we have our here we have our beautiful cake. I went for a more like a smoother technique. Again, that's where you can use, I use like a flat scraper, really got it nice and smooth. And um, now we're gonna play with meltables. Okay, it's been so fun. Here, I'll show you some of these. I don't know if you've had a chance yet to pick these up at your local Michael's store or order them online. But these were so fun to develop with American Crafts. They are, they're delicious. They have a really, really smooth texture. Um, and they're easy and fun 
to work with. So I'm going to show you just a few different things and, um, and we'll go from there. So I actually took about a half a cup of white and a half a cup of the lighter blue multiples. And this is, this is um, a way that you can achieve different colors than what are available. We do have more colors and flavors coming out soon, so just be mindful of that. But one way that you can make these a little bit different and make them your own is to mix some of the colors, right? Kind of go back to that grade school, um, things you learn in grade school. Like when I mix red and yellow, I get orange. Or if I add, you know, blue and red, I get a little bit of purple. So I really love kind of like lighter uh, pastel-y colors. And so I'm just adding some blue to my white and we're gonna, we're gonna put them, put it in the microwave. And one tip that I like to, um, that I like to share specifically just when you're using the meltables for a drip on a cake is one of the things I love about the meltables is they have like this really delicious snap to them. And again, I'm a texture person, so I appreciate the snap. Now, if I were just to melt these and put them directly onto the cake as is, when you're cutting into the cake, it's going to be a little bit more difficult because it does set up and it does have that kind of harder snap to it. So I'm going to take a little bit of vegetable oil and I'm going to add that to, um, to the meltables. And what that's going to do is just soften it up just a little bit so that when you are serving the cake that it is a little bit easier to cut through and it's not necessarily like breaking, uh, breaking all over. However, with that said, you can totally just use these straight onto the cake. Um, the meltables are awesome for so many different things. I'm going to show you a couple of things that we did with them today, but so good for dipping pretzels, dipping fruit, so fun, um, like little fondue parties. You can use these in different molds. Um, these are so fun. These are so fun to play with. So how much vegetable oil do you use? And is coconut oil an option? Coconut oil, yes. You can use coconut oil. Um, I just use, so, so per cup, um, I would use two tablespoons. And you'll see a cup is, excuse me, a cup of the meltables, which is about half of the bag. Um, I use two tablespoons per cup. And um, again, you'll see this, this amount will be plenty to cover, to cover the cake with. Would grapeseed oil or avocado oil work? I personally have not used either, but I, I imagine that they, that they absolutely would. Um, but maybe I should have an oil, a meltable oil, <laughs> meltables and oils uh, test day in the kitchen and we can get more, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Affirmative answers for you. So, okay, so I have my meltables. I'm putting them into the microwave and I'm just gonna start them in there. Um, for about 30 seconds, I like to air on the side of, of um, <clears throat> excuse me, of checking them at kind of lower intervals of time, just because what you don't want to have happen is you put them in for too long and then they seize up, which means they kind of burn um, and then your chocolate kind of gets hard. If that happens, you can, you can try to salvage it with adding a little bit more oil. Um, but I, again, I like to, I, I'm a cautious person. <laughs> so I'd rather, again, start it at a lower time and then incrementally add, add it, add more time to it. Okay, so these are a little bit melty, but not quite enough. So we're gonna add them in for a few more seconds. 
Um, everyone's, everyone's microwave is different. The instructions on the back of the Meltables bag have, has you add them initially in for a minute. Um, so you can definitely try that. Again, I just know everyone's microwaves are different, and so I would err on the side of less time um, so that you don't run the risk of the chocolate seizing up and doing, doing weird things. So, let's see. Just a couple seconds left. Perfect. Hand me the bowl. Thank you. Okay. Megan, are you able to double boil the multiples? Yes. Yep, you absolutely can. How long do they stay good? Do they expire after a certain time? Um, holy smokes. So I personally have never experienced them going bad, but I've also haven't held on to them for, you know, several years. Let me, I can look on the, the expiration. I will, I would say that it probably is a year that it would ex expire. Um, but these are so good. I don't think you'll be able to hold on to them for a year. <laughs> Honestly. Two years. Oh, two years. Okay. My daughter just said it's actually two years. So, so there you go. Okay. So not quite all the way microwaved, still a little bit lumpy. So I'm going to go ahead and just add a little bit more, but look how pretty that, look how pretty that color is, right? It's just like this really light, beautiful blue. So pretty. I'm just going to put it in for 30 more seconds. Then we're going to do some fun things. Okay. Another thing I can show you just while that's doing its thing. Can you take it out and stir it? for me, please. Thank you. Um, it's just adding, I kind of alluded to this earlier, but I just dyed some frosting colors. And one thing you can do is just add little like flecks of frosting to the size of your cake. And you can do that super easily with just a spatula. Um, and see. So I'm just taking some of my pink and again I'm going to use my cake turner. I'm going to let it do a lot of the work. I'm just going to add a little pink here, a little pink there, no rhyme or reason, just wherever I think I want pink to live on my cake. Then I'm going to take some blue, do the same thing, just for a little added intrigue and interest. I've got some yellow as well. You can leave the, it's kind of textured, right? Cause I'm just adding it with this spatula. So you could leave it kind of raised like that where it has kind of risen off the cake. Or you can take your, your cake smoother and I'll leave some raised and some, um, Kind of spread, but you can see, you can just kind of give it a little spread. So it just adds kind of a fun, kind of like tie dye ish look, which is it's always fun. Okay, thank you. Okay, so on to the cake drip. A couple different, well, there's several different ways you can actually do this. Um, I'm gonna show you two. So you could put your multiples into a, like a squeeze bottle. Um, microwave that, same rules apply, you know, in the microwave in terms of melting it, just kind of keep track of it. Um, and you could use a squeeze bottle to squeeze your multiples onto the cake. Um, you could put the multiples into a piping bag and do the same thing. You would just wanna make sure if you were using your multiples in a piping bag, that you had some sort of heat protector for your hands. So whether that's 
an oven mitt or just a rag that you like held over it. Um, or there are gloves that are heat protectant um, and those work as well. So you could do that. Um, I'm gonna show you getting kind of a nice um, long drip using just a spoon. And then I'm also gonna show you a technique where you kind of pour more of the meltables over the cake and let it fall down the side a little bit, a little bit more. It'll make sense when you see it. Um, first thing, oops, that's too, can you know me that parchment paper, please? Hey, Megan, I wanted to share that folks on the chat are saying that your molds look delicious. Oh. And what you're making is beautiful. So we, we do have the video on mute right now since we have 300 people attending. Okay. So we want to make sure that we can make sure that we hear you. But I wanted to, to share the wow, 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 love the design. Oh. Lots of great ideas. So really good feedback. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So I'm just taking my cake drip. So one technique is like, you don't, you don't have to necessarily put cake drip all over your cake, right? You could just pick a portion of your cake and add a few little drips here, here or there. Um, so this, I really like to use a spoon when I'm trying to get that really like deliberate placement of my drip because it's really easy to control. Um, and it's really just this simple. I'm just, I just have my bowl over my cake and, and I'm just watching it fall. Um, again, no real rhyme or reason to, you know, the, the, the drip itself. But one thing, if you do like a longer drip, you just kind of add more meltable to it, or you kind of keep pushing the meltable along the top as, as you go. So hope that makes some sort of sense. So you can see, you can do little drips, you can do super long ones. Um, in that front view, let's see. It's kind of hard when, I, when I'm like not watching the drip myself, but so you can see how they're really like, you can get them really tight. You can spread them kind of further apart. Um, Is there a way to thicken the multiples if you want them thicker? Oh, that's a good question. I have never tried that before, but challenge accepted. <laughs> Next class. I'll have an answer for you. <laughs> um, actually, I will say, now that I say that out loud, when, when, I, when I was using, you know, Sweet Tooth Fairy Meltables, at first I tried using cream because, um, because of other ganache recipes, right, where you just initially do like your, some, your chocolate chips and, and cream. So when I initially started, that's what I used first before I realized that when I wanted it to be softer, that the, um, that the vegetable oil worked better. What I found with the cream, and to answer your question, I wasn't intentionally thinking like, oh, I want it thicker. I'm going to, you know, try to add something to it. But it did turn out almost like, like it was still runny. You could still use it, but it was like this cool paste. In fact, um, oh man, I wish I had some cream right here. I would show you, but, but I did these little kind of like, I put it in a piping bag and I did these little like, like curly cues and they really held their shape so much so that like I was able to let it set up and then put it on the cake and then it maintained its, it maintained its shape. So again, hopefully next class, <laughs> I can show you some of those, some of those things, but, um, Again, I didn't go into it thinking, oh, I need it thicker, but it ended up thicker. So try, try cream, and I did the same ratio. I did to about a half cup, which is about three ounces, I added a tablespoon. So you can give it a try, see, see how it goes. So thank you for that question. It's always fun. It's always fun to learn new things and try new things. 
Okay, so you saw how I did, did um, those drips just with this spoon, okay? So the next thing I'm gonna do is just show you how, let's see. Okay, so again, let's pretend you didn't want, you didn't want your whole entire cake to have drip all over, which is as, an, as a cake artist, it's your choice, right? Just however you want it to look. But if you do, you can just take your meltables and I start by just putting the meltables into the center. So they kind of, uh, so it kind of just is this blob. And then I'm gonna take my spatula and here I'll do it this way so you can kind of see, but you just kind of push it over the edge, but you'll see as it falls, it actually kind of does a totally different um, drip because you have like the weight, the mass of the meltable falling down the side of the cake versus the very like deliberate, individually placed uh, placing of the drip that we did with just the spoon. So, see so you can see how it kind of like see right here where it fell and there, it kind of coats down the the cake even more um it's just a different look and it's i think equally as awesome but again it's just kind of different so let's see so one thing that is also a wonderful truism is that there's always a front and a back to a cake. <laughs> so um, comes in really handy because it's never going to be totally perfect. But um, but you can just kind of look. Okay, so see right here, see right here how more like there's more of the meltables that have like fallen down versus right here where we did those really, really deliberate um, drips with the um, spoon. So you can just kind of see like which one, you know, where on my cake do I like the drip the best? And you pick that and you pick that as, as your front. Um, Bailey, do you mind handing me that, that pan right there that has that? Um, yep, thank you. Megan, do you have a type of spatula that you prefer using, whether it's angled or straight, or prefer using a spoon? I've just been using a straight spatula. I, I do think that um, the angled spatulas are helpful. Um, you know, it, for me personally, just kind of more with the frosting process, just like pulling in the frosting and kind of leveling, leveling it off. Um, but I, most of the time I use a flat, a flat spatula. Do you have any trouble or any recommendations for smoothing out the multiples? Um, so I think an angled spatula would work with, with the multiples for sure. Um, I think that um, you could also with the, I guess I should say, the meltables in and of itself, you could, you could use the end of the spatula to kind of make a little bit of a design on the top of the meltables. Um, <clears throat> I think if you were working quicker, because you can see there is some texture on the top of this, I think you'll find that when you're doing it, um, and I think there, let me rephrase it. I think there's kind of more texture like this on the top because I took more time to kind of explain how to do the drips and was kind of pausing and whatnot during the process. But if you just do it in one fell swoop, you really wouldn't have this, um, that kind of rough look. But the other thing is that we're gonna cover it up with frosting and candy. So, <laughs> so there's another way that you can, you can, uh, let's see that you can kind of disguise if, if you don't like the way that that looks. I hope that helps. 
Okay, real quick, one thing to show you too. So I have pre-made some just like bark, I would call it. This is just the white meltables with some frosting sprinkled on top. All I did was, excuse me, what did I say? Oh, sorry. It's meltables with sprinkles on top, not frosting. Um, and all I did was I grabbed a pan and I don't have that much meltables left at this current moment in my bowl, but I'll just show you how simple it is. Um, you just take your meltables and, and you just pour it onto a plate or excuse me, on parchment paper, on a plate or a sheet or what have you. And you kind of can just spread it out like this. You don't, you, as far as thickness, it can be however thick or however thin you prefer your, your uh, treat. And, um, and then, so let's see. So you can see I just spread some out right here. Then you just grab whatever sprinkle or candy or whatever you like. You can kind of just sprinkle it on top. Go put it in the fridge, you know, for 10 or so minutes and then let it set up. And then it will act, it'll be strong enough that you can just hold it like this and then we'll break it apart and just add it to the cake. So Bailey, do you mind taking this, please? And just putting it in the, the freezer. Okay, and the other thing is I just took some of those sandwich cookies that we crushed up and put in the center of our cake, and I dipped them in the white meltables. And then I took some other meltables that I had colored, and I just put them and drizzled them on top. So we're gonna use these as part of our design, um, but also another fun project, right? You can just walk down the aisles of your local grocery store and think, what will taste good covered in delicious meltables and give it a go. All right, so what I'm gonna do next is just show you some fun ways to just dress this cake up. So what I've done, and again, this is kind of just like a little tip. You don't have to do it this way. Um, if you don't have frosting um, couplers and you still want to be able to kind of interchange your frosting and your tips, what I like to do is just bag my frosting into a piping bag and then grab another piping bag and put the tip in that so that when I want to use this tip, but I don't want to use, you know, whatever frosting color, I can just take out the frosting bag. I'll have the tip ready for, uh, for the whatever color. So I put my tip in, you can find tips at Michael's, there's lots of fun options. And I actually always put my tip in the bag first because I get overly confident sometimes, like, oh, I know where to cut the bag, I'm not gonna cut it too high up. But inevitably it happens where but I don't put the tip in and then I cut it and then my tip falls straight through the bag and I have to start all over. So if you put your tip in the bag, I just give it about the size of my thumb and I cut it right there because that means that you know your tip is going to fit through without going all the way through and falling out of your bag. This tip has an open star. So, which has its teeth that kind of, oops, there we go, kind of come back a little further. So I'm actually, I just tested it and it needs a tiny bit more. You want to make sure you can expose, you can expose the part the frosting is going to come out. With the colored frosting, I'm just going to make sure that the hole that I cut in my frosting bag is big enough that it doesn't poke through the tip and come out. So let's see, so you'll see, I'll give it a little squeeze. And so we're good there. I'm gonna do that with a couple more tips. So if there's any questions at this point while I'm 
doing this. I'm happy to answer them. Back toward, towards the beginning while you're doing that. Um, some of the questions we've had about when you were freezing your, um, your frosting, uh -huh. you, what, what type of container do you keep it in? How do you freeze it? Um, what, do you, what, what are some tips that, that work the best? Okay, so I think the best way to do it is to just get some um, like saran wrap or cling wrap or whatever, whatever it is that you have at your at home. And that's the best way that I have found. And what's great is I just get little labels like that maybe you have in your home office or you can get like, um, you know, little sticky notepads and you can write the date that you made it, you can write the flavor that it is. Um, so that, again, if you're stockpiling cake, which I highly recommend, <laughs> um, you'll know when you made it, you can kind of FIFO it, and you shouldn't have, excuse me, you shouldn't have any issues in terms of ex expiration dates or confusing the flavors. Um, so I found that just your, nothing super special about the, what kind of wrap you use, but just as long as it's airtight, there are big like storage, like gallon, no, it wouldn't be gallon. I think it's two gallon size that would probably fit um, a cake that you could definitely use that size of like a bag that closes. But just anything that you can do to make it airtight, um, you can, don't be, don't be grossed out, but you can use clean trash bags so long as they're not flavored or scented because you don't want like lavender plasticky taste of your cake if <laughs> that's what kind of um, scent your trash bags have. So you can, you could go to like a, rest, a local restaurant uh, supply store that might have like bigger, they're called like bun pan bags that you could store your stuff into. But really, at the end of the day, you could just use what you have um, in your kitchen and it should be just fine. So, okay. So I've, add, I've, I've put my tips into my bags and I have fun, few different flavors, different, different tips. And I picked my front of my cake, right, didn't I? Yes, which is right, right here. Hold on, I'm gonna give her a look this way. Probably like right there, yeah? Okay, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna start adding frosting and I'm gonna use some candy, I'm gonna use some bark, um, I'm gonna use some of these fun suckers. Again, if you go, let's see, can you hand me one of the sprinkle bags, please? No, the, um, yeah. So if you go to Michael's, you can find some really fun Sweet Tooth Fairy sprinkles that are available. Um, one of the things that I found for years, again, as a hobbyist, and now is, I don't know that I would call myself a professional, <laughs> but um, just for so long, I felt like there are a lot of the options out there in terms of sprinkles were all the same. And so it's been so, so, so fun to be able to moonlight as a sprinkle designer. <laughs> so there are a lot of fun options that you can find at Michael's on their website. So I highly recommend um, going there and seeing what, what we have. Uh, one thing that I do, I kind of referenced this the last class we did, is um, don't be afraid to make your own sprinkle mix of the sprinkles that are available. We have solid colors that are available. We have different mixes that complement one another. And you can, what I've done here is I've just mixed some of the mixes together um, and they look really, really cute. So just you're a creative person, why you're a Michaels customer, it's why, why, why you're here today. And um, I just encourage you to kind of let your creativity fly when it comes to this. So I'm just gonna start adding some frosting and this tip is like a big open star tip and I'm just squeezing 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 applying pressure and just doing a dollop here or there that one kind of is more of a rosette where I just twisted it you can just do 
a little bit um, of pressure and not as much frosting and you'll have different dimensions of your, of your um, dollops. With this tip, you can kind of wiggle back and forth and it just gives a little bit of like a ripple effect. Um, we've got this, this tip that, I'll show you, let's see, kind of like a teardrop. And I'm just gonna go back and forth, back and forth. Just adding little doodads here or there. Kind of fun. Okay, I've got this open star tip and I'm just gonna, same thing, I'm gonna do, ooh. Okay, so what just happened there? It's a good reminder. When your frosting is kind of setting up, <clears throat> excuse me, when you have frosting in your piping bags or even just out in a bowl, it will, if it's sitting out exposed, it'll get a little bit dry. And like you just saw, if you go to pipe with it, it won't really adhere to the cake or the frosting because it's already dried up and it's not like tacky anymore. So you can just give it a squeeze, wipe it off, and then you'll be good after that. So this, I'm just taking, adding more little doodads, more swirls, there are so many fun tips available at Michael's that you can try out. That's fun. So I just flipped the, this tip to where the teardrop is kind of more on the bottom. And it just gives like a totally different kind of ribbon effect, which is fun. Okay, let's see. Where's our, that's kind of more like our, will you go grab that other bark? Okay, so remember our bark that we made? Well, you didn't see me make this one. This one I'd already set up, but um, we're just gonna break pieces. I'm gonna put it down so it doesn't break all over the place. But you can just kind of break, press down on it. That's gonna make these fun pieces. They're gonna be pretty abstract. You can do, you can kind of go for big ones, you can go for tiny ones. Let's see, our uh, glue one that we made is right here. So we can, maybe we should keep that one kind of big. Let me keep that one big. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna add it. So this is always the tricky part for me when I'm doing a class because I'm <laughs> trying to decorate it without seeing the front of it. So I'll do my best and I will rely on my assistants and you guys to tell me if something looks a little crazy. But all you do, you can just set, set that in there. Let's see. Um, let's take some of our white. Megan, do you know which tips you're using? What tip numbers? Um, I don't, <laughs> not off the top of my head. We could look, but um, maybe after we could do a, like a list of the ones we use to provide. Okay, so um, one thing when you're, when you're adding the bark, you can, want to make sure that you are adding frosting to like support the the bark so you'll see that even though maybe you're not gonna like necessarily see this side or this part of the cake you can still add frosting because it will help with the bark like it'll help it stay in place it'll help your candy stay in place um, we have some like some fun suckers that we also have. And um, this is bright pink, so it's a little bit contrasty with like kind of the softer pink that we've done. I've broken some of these candy pieces that you can 
put wherever. Let's see. Okay, so remember our uh, sandwich cookies that we put inside of our cake. These are the ones that I dipped in the white meltables and then I just drizzled them with frosting. We can put, let's see, I'll probably wait and do that when I can, after I do the sprinkles. But, um, but anyway, you can see I'm just kind of adding, just kind of adding it wherever I think it might be cute to add. Okay, we've got different candies. Here are some gumballs that are also available that just add, just put it where you think it would look fun. Um, again, I know I say this a lot, no rhyme or reason. If you think that a gumball needs to live right there, then by all means, you put a gumball wherever you think it needs to go. Let's see. We can finish out this back side of the cake so that when you do cut into it, I don't know about the people in your life, but I have six humans that I'm responsible for. And sometimes when we're cutting dessert, if there's a part of the cake that has a particular treat or sucker or what have you, it's a full on brawl for that slice of cake. So you can definitely finish the back side of the cake, even though it is the back. Um, you wanna make sure that everyone can have their piece of bark or whatever you, whatever you, whatever you add to it. So let's see. Okay, okay. That's fun. I think that's cute. My husband always teases me because he's like, you just need to stop while you're ahead. <laughs> because I would just keep going and going and going and going till the cake was like a little bit over the top. But that's okay. Okay, so next thing. I'm gonna show you just how to apply some of these sprinkles. Um, since our cake has already kind of set up and the frosting is dry to touch, um, you can just take a little bit of, like a little bit of water, like a tiny little bit and put it on your hand, excuse me, on your finger and like dip your finger in the sprinkles and then kind of dip them and put them along the side of the cake. You could do that. You could also just get a little bit of frosting so your hand's a little kind of sticky and run your finger along the bottom so it just adds a little bit of uh, tackiness to your cake if it's, if it's already set up, which in this cake case it definitely has already. Um, and then you can just add your sprinkles to the, wherever you like on the cake. Um, I do think it's fun to have that kind of bottom rim of sprinkles around, around the cake. And if, if you, you could do this step before your frosting sets up. So you would do it right after you've done whatever texture you want for your texture of frosting you wanted for your cake. While it's still kind of tacky, you would just um, take your hand and put some sprinkles around the base, or you could take um, a spoon and you could just drizzle some sprinkles around the base before you have done all this other, other stuff. Um, but since we did the other stuff first, then this is also a way to achieve that look if you've done, done it in this order. Let's see. All right, how are we feeling, friends? How are we feeling about our cake? I will say there's a lot of positive feedback. Everybody thinks it's very pretty. It looks like Candyland. They've learned a lot of tips and it's been a really helpful class. Even I, just watching you, have been learning quite a few tips. So thank you. Thank you. I think everybody is you know, loving it, feeling like it's beautiful. And it's good to learn these opportunities. It's good to get creative and kind of learn new tips from everybody. So I appreciate everybody attending today. I know that we're 
wrapping up, but I want to make sure that, that you know, welcome you guys to attend other classes available at Michael's. We have a good variety of them in, in all categories across the business and um, would love to have you join us. It's fun, it's free, and, and you learn some things and we get to do something creative. So thank you very much. Yes, thank you. Thank you, everyone. So fun. Let's eat some cake. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, we've, we do have, if you take a look at michaels.com slash classes, we've got a variety of classes that are available to, if you're wanting to, you know, check out new types of crafting, new types of uh, ways to do things, getting tips and tricks and ideas, there's always some fun ways to be creative. So we appreciate everybody joining us today and enjoy, enjoy the rest of your afternoon. We will share out, um, I'll get the recipes from, from Megan and share those out with everybody so that way um, anyone who attended the class will have access to the, the recipe information there. And um, it's a beautiful cake. It turned out really, really nice. Thank you. Thank you so much, everyone. So fun. Bye-bye, guys.